afternoon, everyone. I'm Brooke Heron with the Stragon Media Network, and I'm coming to you from the Dennis Beery Complex. Just overhead, we have at the Andy Algiansic Field, we have a regional final game taking place. But we are here for the Leopard Player Show tonight, um, where we have members of our Louisville softball team. Before we jump into our interview tonight, we want to give a special shout out to some of our sponsors um, the Stragat Media Network, Thomas Dental and Associates, Beatty Sports, as well as Guiley and Guiley. We also want to give a big thank you to Jared Heller of Leper Nation as he's a huge contributor to our show. Tonight I'm here with two of our uh, Louisville softball players. I'm here with junior shortstop Maddie Benson as well as Caitlin Twynham, freshman second baseman. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Um, so let's get right started. I want you guys to kind of walk me through the season and some of the biggest highlights um, of the 20. Well, our biggest highlight for me was definitely the Jackson game. Um, you know, that was a big federal league team. Um, so when you went up against the federal league and being independent, you know, that, that's a big game. Um, I thought also our lake, our lake game was a big game. Um, went into extra innings, ended up coming out with the win. So I was very proud of that. I'd have to agree the Jackson federal league game was big because it was a fed team. And the late game, we ended up setting a record for the most scored runs and extra innings with that. And also the Glen Oak game, because it was also a federal team. Um, the Solon game, for sure, with Mary Smallpox. Well, being independent, your guys' schedule is not easy by any means. You play great teams, and Stark County is just known for softball. So in those big games, what do you think contributed to you guys getting the dub? Honestly, I think we came together as a team, um, especially in those two games. Um, you know, we fought to the end. You know, Jackson Jackson's is so good to the point where, like, they can come in the seventh inning, and they can still beat you. And I felt like our defense was big um, early in the season, um, came up with big plays. Um, I also felt like our bats were very hot in the beginning of the season. Um, so we put you know, runs across the board, and I felt like that, that really contributed to our W. I have to agree. We didn't come out quite as flat when we did struggle at times. We always finished the game with the hunger and like driving force to win, and we kept our bats hot and ready to go. Well, I think that contributed to your 7-2 and two start. Um, but I am going to go to a little sadder of a topic. You guys did hit a little uh, rough patch midway through. Um, as players, what was your guys' mentality as you're trying to pull through? Uh, my mentality was uh, we got to figure out how to fix this. Um, you know, we had we were 7-2. and two. We had a winning record in the beginning and then, you know, went into this little slump is what we called it. And finding a way how to be a leader – when things weren't going as well was something that I had a challenge with. Um, you know, same thing with upperclassmen. I felt like the upperclassmen really had a big impact on that. So, you know, I just tried my best to keep stay in the game and just find the love for it. Um, that's why I'm here. That's why I do it. So, I mean, that's all I have to say about that. Um, I agree. Uh, we had to learn from our mistakes, definitely, for sure. Um, it was definitely like a rough patch, like you said, and just battling through that, um, not letting – Mistakes from the past game bleed into the next game was a big, like, learning part, which is about softball. And clearly you guys are six days a week. So what was the practice like during that time? Was it upbeat, or were you really focused and dialed in during that time? Um, I think our practices were very focused. Um, you know, we did repetitions. We got our reps in, um, which was the main goal. Um, we threw in some new drills every now and then when someone was struggling with either glove work or, you know, keeping their hands high. So... I felt like we did a good good job of adjusting to what we needed throughout the season. Um, yeah, we did drills, like you said. Um, we focused a lot on mistakes that we made in the past and ways we could learn from them and just becoming better in a whole. So, Caitlin, you were one of many freshmen that played this year. Um, it's a huge adjustment coming up to the varsity level as a mm -hmm. freshman. So what was that like for you? What was the nerves, and how did you overcome that? So I've been playing a high-level trough ball since I was young, and I just brought the softball game I always knew how to play mm -hmm. um, to when I played at second and at bat. And I just had to adapt to, the one, the speed of the game because it's a faster pace, and uh, I had to just adapt to my new teammates and just roll with it, I guess. So, Maddie, you're a three-year letter winner here. You've started um, at shortstop all three years. So knowing what that feels like, and you can put yourself in their shoes, what did you do as a leader that you are that you can we can see when you play? What did you do for them if they came to you or just advice? Um, I just told them to learn how to be comfortable in uncomfortable positions. Um, you know, yes, you come in as a freshman, you're a newbie, 
I understand that. But, you know, you've also been in these circumstances. You play high-level travel ball. Um, you've been in situations where there's pressure, where there's, you know, runners on base. And I just tell them to fall in love with the game. You know, this is this is a fun game. This is what we're supposed yeah. to do. So um, just be comfortable. Um, give, give all your effort. That's all I've ever asked of all my players, um, all my teammates, is just give 100% effort and – um, you know, Caitlin Twanum here is, has done that for me. So I'm very, very proud of her for that and uh, grateful she's my teammate. So being that you both know, uh, mentioned that you play travel, how important is travel to you getting ready for your high school season? Travel, to me, travel is everything. Um, it's the reason why I'm recruited. It's the reason why I am so adapted into pressure situations. Um, I see great competition all year round and uh, play at one of the best levels. So that's how tra um, travel ball prepared me for high school. Um, just with the challenges and overcoming, you know, situations where I wasn't really sure how to deal with it. But since I have travel ball in the back of my uh, my pocket, I was able to really overcome with those. I'd have to agree. Travel ball gives you a lot of uh, situations that you have to overcome and work through. And it's something that makes you better in the process. And it's how, like you said, you get recruited. And it exposes you to a lot of high-level players and teams that makes you a better well, luckily, we've been able to come and watch a few games, and I personally believe I had the best seat in the house in center field to watch <laughs> you guys as middle infielders make some ESPN plays. What does that feel like in that moment, and what does that do to the team atmosphere when you guys get it done like that? Well, how I see it is I'm just supporting my pitcher. Um, you know, I'm somebody who will give you maximum effort, and um, it's something that where a play like that with your effort, um, it can change the environment really quickly because it sees, hey, I'm putting my body on the line for our success. So, you know, it kind of tributes into, okay, somebody else can do it now. And then we rack up all this momentum and then we can bring it into, you know, the at-bats. I'd have to agree. I feel like it's my job to almost do that, to back the pitch up, like you said. And I feel like I should give effort and everything because that's what you should do in the sport. That makes you better. And in the moment after you do it, it really cheers the environment mm -hmm. up. It gives the excitement to your team your uh, coaches to the people watching but after it's over you have to maintain focus and be ready for the next play which is the most important and maybe your future at bat too at that point. well it definitely shows in the way you guys play the game well Maddie first we want to congratulate you not only on your first team district honor as well as your second team all Ohio that's a huge deal but we also want to congratulate you on your recent commitment to Maryland that's a very big deal playing division one what was that decision like for you because I can only imagine how stressful that was well, first off, I was, you know, I want to thank you for the support. Um, you know, recruitment is a long process. Um, a lot of unknowns for me when I first started it, but um, I found I found home at Maryland, and I'm super, super happy. I'm super blessed um, to be a future Terp, and you know, I just I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna run with it and uh, see how much I can come, um, can overcome. So, well, we're proud of you here at the Leopard Layer. So, Caitlin, I want to ask you. Um, we're in the Solon sectional. Um, game here and the team atmosphere what was it like when Maddie um because someone had previously got a hit prior and I think it was Anna yeah. and then Maddie's going up to the plate what was the atmosphere like in that dugout it, it was pumped up it was uh me Brooke and Kenzie we had our <laughs> visors flipped upside down we had these beach glasses on with sharks and everything and we we just knew it was time she was gonna hit it over we knew we were gonna get this we just had full belief in her and we were making the turf noise, <laughs> and we were just we just knew what was going to happen. Um, so, Maddie, being the power hitter you are, you are walked a lot, um, and as we hate to see it, but it's just that's just how good you are. Um, so in that moment, when you stepped into the box, what was your approach, and how did you calm yourself down in this pressure situation? Well, my approach didn't really change. Um, I've been in high-pressure situations like that before in travel ball, so I, was, I felt prepared. Um, you know, yes, I got walked a lot this season, but I didn't let that affect affect, affect my at bat. You know, I knew that our season was on the line, and um, you know, I was just gonna have fun with it. You know, if it happened, it happened. If it didn't, then okay, we will, you know, deal with it after. But um, I just felt comfortable, and you know, I was just ready for I was ready for the next game. <laughs> <right>. So, <laughs> well, we were so happy that you could get it done on that and continue your guys' season. So you both are very fast. I've heard you guys have the speed, and I've been able to watch you guys steal a lot of bases. How important is base running? Uh, base running honestly could make or break the game. Um, when you're focused and you have your heads up and you take that bag or, you know, sometimes two bags, right. um, you know, that automatically moves the runner into scoring position. And with the teams that we play, the hard, hard schedule that we play with, um, 
like that is huge. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when you take a bag like that or um, two, you know, you automatically set yourself in a productive situation for your teammates to score you. I'd agree. Uh, speed is a big threat in soccer when you have it, and that helps your team because, like you said, it sets yourself up in scoring position. Like you can be on second and they hit a double and you're scoring. Like it's going to be a key for you to get all the way up to get into three if you're mm-hmm. at first. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely a big threat, and when you have it, it's it's a good tool. All right. So earlier in May, you guys got to recognize the state team in 2019, which. You guys are, I'm assuming, pretty young, and I'm assuming you guys were there. Do you remember, were you guys at that game when they made history for Louisville? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was at both days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was at both days as well. We had our little band that goes there. So take us back through that recognition day. What did you guys do? I know there's a rock, and just take us back to what you guys did to recognize their accomplishments. Well, I mean, first off, we had to recognize that, you know, they won state. That is probably the biggest thing here at Louisville. That's the biggest thing about our program. Um you know, they won state. That's that's huge. So, you know, for them to get the recognition that they deserve, you know, that was nice to see. Um, we also played a little kickball game at the end, so <laughs> we had a little bit of fun with it. Yeah, I think the most thing to uh, mention them about is how they came back. You know, some teams would just give up like, oh, well, like, we're going down. But they kept fighting. Even at day two, they kept going. And that's something that you should honor as a program. And like you said, we played kickball, <laughs> and it was fun. It was it was really fun yeah. to see them all together mm-hmm. and just talk and play kickball. So my final question is: is I wasn't th- I wasn't there to be present, but the kickball game, how competitive it, competitive was it, and who came out with the dub? Oh well, who came out the dub? Oh, okay. <laughs> say that first. It was it was super competitive. Um, I feel like both teams didn't want to lose. Um, so you know you had a team who's very, very competitive that won state, and you have a little varsity team that was like, hey, we're going to be the state champs. So it's very, very competitive. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very fun. You know, some of them are obviously still playing well. They're still going right now, and it was very fun. Well, we want to congratulate you on a great season, um, and I'm so blessed that I got to actually play with you guys and have, again, a front row seat to your guys' excellence. Um, that's all the time we have tonight. Again, we are coming to you from the Dennis Beery Complex, where if – you probably heard a bunch of cheering going on where a team just won the regional final here. Um, and then I am also want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, again, we want to thank our sponsors, um, the Stragate Media Network, Domus Dental and Associates, as well as Beatty Sports and Guiley and Guiley, as well as a huge thank you to Jared Heller from Leopard Nation. As he's a huge contributor to this show. Um, I'm your host, Brooke Taran. That's all we have for you tonight. Keep a lookout for future episodes with other Louisville sports team. This is the Leopard Layer Show. Have a great night.